we are studying the bone fibula fibula is the lateral and smaller bone of the leg it is very thin as compared to the tibia it is homologous with the ulna of the upper limb to determine the side of the given bone first see the upper end or the head of the fibula it is slightly expanded in all directions the lower end or the lateral malleolus is expanded antero posteriorly and is flattened from side to side the medial side of the lower end bears a triangular articular facet or the talar facet anteriorly and the deep or malleolar fossa posteriorly once you identify the malleolar fossa place the thumb of the corresponding side in the malleolar fossa and hold the bone vertically now you can see the talar facet is facing anteriorly whereas the malleolar fossa is posterior to the facet this helps you to identify the side of the given bone and also helps you to hold the bone in anatomical position so the given bone here belongs to the left side next we'll see the features of the fibula first beginning with the upper end it is also called the head of the fibula its superior surface shows a circular articular facet which faces superiorly and antero medially it articulates with the lateral condyle of tibia to form the superior tibio fibular joint its margins provide attachment to the capsule of this joint styloid process is an upward projection from the posterior lateral aspect of the head front of the styloid process provides attachment to fibular collateral ligament area anterior lateral and posterior to the attachment of fibular collateral ligament gives attachment to biceps femoris common peroneal nerve is related to the posterior lateral aspect of the neck of fibula now we'll see the features of the shaft shaft of fibula shows three borders anterior posterior and medial borders and three surfaces medial lateral and posterior first beginning with the borders the anterior border begins below the anterior aspect of the head at its lower end it divides to enclose an elongated triangular area which is continuous with the lateral surface of the lateral malleolus posterior border it is rounded its upper end lies with the styloid process below the border is continuous with the medial margin of the groove on the back of the lateral malleolus posterior intermuscular septum of the leg is attached to its upper 3/4 the medial or the interosseous border it lies close to and just medial to the anterior border inferiorly it ends at the upper end of the roughened area for the interosseous ligament interosseous membrane is attached to it except at the upper end where there is a gap between tibia and fibula and transmits the anterior tibial vessels now we'll see the surfaces the medial surface it lies in between the anterior and the medial borders it is very narrow extensor digitorum longus is attached in front extensor hallucis longus is attached behind and peroneus tertius is attached below the lateral surface it is between the anterior and the posterior borders peroneus longus is attached to its upper part 
and peroneus brevis is attached to the lower part posterior surface it is in between the interosseous border or the medial border and the posterior border its upper two third is divided into medial and lateral areas by a sharp vertical ridge that is the medial crest medial area or the grooved surface between the medial crest and the medial border gives origin to tibialis posterior upper one fourth of the lateral area gives origin to soleus muscle and the lower three fourth of the lateral area gives origin to flexor hallucis longus peroneal artery descends in relation to the medial crest nutrient artery a branch of peroneal artery enters the nutrient foramen present just above the middle of the posterior surface nutrient canal is directed downwards and therefore the upper end of the fibula is the growing end the lower end lateral malleolus is 0.5 cm lower than the medial malleolus the surfaces of the lateral malleolus it shows four surfaces medial lateral anterior and posterior surface and a inferior border so the medial surface bears an triangular articular surface anteriorly which articulates with the talus more posteriorly there is a malleolar fossa the lateral surface is subcutaneous and the posterior surface it has a groove for the tendons of peroneal longus and brevis now coming to the ossification of the fibula fibula ossifies from one primary center and two secondary centers The primary center for the shaft appears during the 8th week of intrauterine life and the secondary center for the lower end appears during the first year and fuses by with the shaft by about 16 years and the other secondary center for the upper end appears during the 4th year and fuses with the shaft by about 18 years of life so the ossification of fibula is important because it violates the law of ossification because the secondary center which appears first in the lower end does not fuse last the reasons for this violation are the secondary center appears first in the lower end because it is the pressure epiphysis and the upper epiphysis fuses last because this is the growing end of the bone now applied respects related to fibula fibula is the preferred bone for grafting as it does not take part in the weight transmission an injury to the neck of fibula is most likely to injure the common peroneal nerve which is related to the neck of fibula so this completes the bone fibula